right? I know, yeah. I've been with them already for, uh, like, this is going to be my fourth year now. Yeah. Wow. That's so just amazing. in, like, different capacities. Like, I, I originally started as a youth advisory board member mm-hmm. for about three years, and then I transitioned into a board of directors position. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So how did you how did you like it, and how did you get involved? Yeah, so I think for me, I remember I was, like, in college, and I was looking for different conferences to go to yeah. related to, like, sexual health, reproductive health. And so then I came across YTH Live, um, which uh, back then, back in 2012, it was under a different name. It was called Sex Tech back then. Mm-hmm. And then um, I just got funding for my institution to go because um, they kind of tied into my academics and what I personally wanted to achieve and my other involvements on campus. And so, um, so I got funding for my institution to go my first year. And then I remember I met um, somebody who used to work at YTH who told me about the Youth Advisory Board position, and she was like, this is a new position. We're looking for, like, folks in different regions in the U.S. to uh, be a part of it. So you should definitely look into it. And I was like, all right, cool. And so, um, That's so yeah. And kind of just so I took applied off and I got in, and yeah. Yes. And then how did you become a board of directors? You just got more involved. Yeah, so um, I was transitioning out. I was just kind of like, you know, I had already been involved for a few years with YTH Live and YTH in general, and so um, I was just looking into transitioning into uh, not so much health-related uh, material, but still within the education realm. And mm-hmm. so right now, I'm currently pursuing my master's in higher education in Chicago. That's amazing! At Congratulations. University. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so through that, I kind of was like kind of in the midst of that process. Like I knew I was going into graduate school, not necessarily with a focus on public health, but still wanting to be involved in some way. And so um, Sharon, the current executive director, he offered uh, he offered me a position to be a part of the actual board of directors uh, with the other board members. And I already knew them from previous experience and oh, stuff, man. but to actually be like invited to be a part of it was just kind of like, whoa, this is a big deal, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I was super honored and super humbled and, and really excited to be a part of that that particular board um, and still be involved with YTH, so, yeah. yeah. that's amazing. You've done so much, all while doing your master's. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, I know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So speaking of YTH Live, I'm so excited to see. I've never been to San Francisco. Okay. So I'm just excited for that experience, and YTH Live just seems like, just re- I'm always checking online, like, the latest updates and stuff. I'm super, super excited for it. And when I got the call that they wanted me to be the MC for this year, it was such an honor. And you were the MC last year, I believe. It was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about like the overall experience. What do I need to know? So, being an MC, <laughs> it was my first time doing it. I don't really think we had like a previous MC before, or at least like a young person be the MC. Mm. So I really had nobody to uh, actually rely on as for feedback. And I also found out I was going to be the MC about, like, a couple weeks before oh, really? the conference. Yeah, I think, like, I kind of, like, it was, like, something that was, I know, talked about prior to mm-hmm. uh, when I officially found out. But when I officially found out, I was like, okay, like, what do I do now? Because yeah. <laughs> um, I had been to, I mean, what helped with my experiences, I had been to previous conferences before. So mm-hmm. I knew kind of, like, the structure and I knew the role of that uh, MC at YTH. I know what that would look like, kind of. And I knew kind of how to revamp it a little bit and kind of mm-hmm. give it a little bit more, um, like flavor a little more energy so that people were hyped up so yeah so i had nobody to <laughs> ask for feedback or rely on in terms of how to prepare to be an mc so um for you i would say you know just kind of and this is gonna be your first time to attending yth yeah Park. yeah so it's um you're gonna be busy <laughs> okay. uh, i think people are definitely gonna want to meet you um i would say just be your most authentic self in that position in that mm-hmm. role uh, as you know, and as you already spoke about, it's it's a really on, it's really an honor to be offered this position. Right. So you know, just use that opportunity to kind of set the platform of who you are as an individual, your role in YTH and part of the youth advisory board, mm-hmm. but also use that as an opportunity to network and meet folks. Like I had met folks that apparently had gone to previous YTH live conferences that I didn't meet until last year because of my mm-hmm. role at the conference last year. And so um, so yeah, just really use it to your best advantage and just show the world who you really are and be your authentic self. Awesome. I'm excited. So you must be just a natural then because you got kind of hit the ground running. And just yeah, I mean, like I, like I said, it's, you know, it's very high intensity, so you're going to be running around all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, be ready for changes done on the spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I have to be really flexible with just adjustments and time changes and adjustments in the schedule. It's like, just be very flexible to all of those things because all of those things can very well happen the day of. 
the yeah. morning of, the moment before you're about to speak. <laughs> well, I'm a journalist, so I love breaking news. So okay. <laughs> hopefully, well, yeah, perfect. hopefully. Yeah. So <laughs> I know that you, uh, you just had a few weeks before prior that you knew. So right when you found found out, did you do any pre planning, some preparation, maybe by yourself or with uh, other members? Yeah, of the that's a really good question. Um, I didn't. I think I, the mentality that I had, like I said, given my previous experience with uh, previous YTH Live conferences, was just to go in there with an open mind uh, and to just, you know, I've spoken in public before. I was offered um, to be a part of the opening plenary session uh, for two years in a row. So I think just kind of taking those those experiences into consideration, just like letting it be, like knowing that, you know, this is who I am. It was really more of like a internal self-reflection as opposed to like preparation to speak in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> That's awesome. And did you feel like the conference was geared towards youth, definitely helpful um, around youth leaders like yourself? Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of my favorite things about YTH Live mm -hmm. is that I've, the reason I've been going every year since is because I just love the interactions among different generations of people. So you have adults who are engaged with youth leaders in their communities who are also engaging with other youth leaders around the world and in different parts of the country, right? So that's mm -hmm. probably my favorite thing about YTH Live as opposed to other conferences is that the nature of YTH Live and the structure of YTH Live really allows for that um, for that communication and that connection to happen among different generations of people who are all passionate about the same thing, which is about youth innovation, tech, and health, and how all of those come together. And so I really think that's what makes YTH Live a unique conference as opposed to other conferences that are out there. Do you, excuse me. Sorry. Bless you. Thank you. That is awesome. So do you have a favorite part of YTH Live? Or maybe something that happened last year that was your favorite? I know there's so many different things, panels and discussions. Yeah. Yeah. I think last year, it was the first year we did like a photo booth session. Um, <laughs> and I really liked that part because it was, it just allowed people to like be goofy in the space and allowed people to just, you know, like wear, con like, you know, wear masks and things like that. I mean, it was a small edition, but I feel like that photo booth really kind of like set like a different tone for that experience for, particularly for young people, for the youth, right? And this is all like in the same space as the, the youth meetup session that was happening. So, um, so I think that also just like made that uh, connection between the two things even better. Um, so that's my favorite part. I think my favorite part also is just like the opening day, just seeing everybody, um, seeing the opening session, the opening plenary folks speak, um, I think is always really powerful and really empowering in many ways, mm -hmm. um, whether or not I possess the same identities as the folks who are speaking or not. So I always like the first day, it's always, you know, the more high intensity, like, oh my gosh, we're all here, this is, you know, awesome. That adrenaline um, rush. Right, that adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. and so, um, yeah, the first day, of, I would say even as host, as a MC, like, it's probably going to be the busiest, um, but yeah, after the second and third day, I think things start to wind down, and you start making more stronger connections with people that you met the first day, so. Did you yeah. feel a vast difference between being an attendee versus being an MC? Um, yeah, I mean, in a way, I think, I think being an attendee, you know, you're just kind of, like, laid back, and I think there's this... I mean, even recalling back to my first time I went to YTH Live, it was this sense of, like, separation. Like, I was so young, and I was like, oh, my gosh, these people are doing all these wonderful and amazing yeah. things. And then to be approached by somebody from the organization who was, like, in actually interested in what I had to offer, what I had to say, was really kind of, like, it was a shocker for me. Because mm -hmm. I was a sophomore in college. I was still relatively, you know, I was still really young. I mean, I'm still pretty young now. But <laughs> I was younger then, and I think just that, um, just that relationship, right? Like, I mean, the fact, I don't know, had... Um, that person who used to work at YTH had not came to me in 2012. Like, I don't know if I would still be really involved. Mm -hmm. But I think just as an attendee, like, there was a sense of separation. But then once I became the MC, once I got invited to the opening plenary and being a part of the youth advisory board, like, I felt like it was, like, much more deeper, like, yeah. the connection, you know? So. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to – so why should innovators and youth leaders attend YTH Live? <laughs> um why should they attend YTH Live? I think they should attend YTH Live because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it just bridges the gap uh, and it bridges, you know, the communication interactions among different generations of people who are all passionate about the same things. And also, um, it's in San Francisco location-wise. It's just yeah. central, very close to Silicon Valley, very close to a lot of startups that are doing a lot of really awesome work with youth innovators and mm -hmm. youth entrepreneurs um, who are engaged also with technology and youth health-related topics, and so, yeah, so I think those are just some of the reasons why, and I think it just, 
awesome network of folks, um, not just from the West Coast, not just from the East Coast, but from all over the country, and even some folks from around the world, too. So. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I wish it could, just, it could come soon enough, and I'm looking forward to meeting you there. Is there anything for this year that you're really looking forward to, or you hope happens at YTH Live 2016? Yeah, so it's actually really interesting. I feel like I'm super under, like, I'm kind of, like, under the rug about what's happening this year, yeah. so I don't necessarily know what's happening, uh, which is kind of cool, too, because I've also been involved in, like, selecting the workshops for the conference every year, but now that I'm in a board of directors position, I think it'll just be interesting to uh, to come to this conference once again as, like, more of an attendee, but also as yeah. being a part of the board of directors, so... Um, I'm just really looking forward to the surprise, actually, now that I, I'm not as heavily involved with the planning of the conference. I'm just looking forward to what the committees come up with in terms of new things or things that have been improved from last year, previous years. Um, I was really happy with the way last year's conference went and mm -hmm. new additions and kind of how receptive the attendees were to those new additions, including the photo booth, among other things. And so, um, yeah, I'm just excited to go there as an, just an attendee, just to be a part and be present in that space again. I'm excited, too, and we have to grab a picture at the photo booth this year, too. Yes, absolutely. I'm <laughs> so looking forward to meeting you and attending the conference, which is held on April 24th to the 26th, I believe, San Francisco at Hotel Kabuki. And, yes. yeah, I look forward to seeing you there, and hopefully I'll I look do forward to meeting you too. half a good job as you did, and I may have to <laughs> run and grab you sometimes for a little bit of help and advice. But I'm sure you'll be great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to me today. Thank you. And have a good one. You too. Good luck with everything. You're in New York right now? I'm currently in New York right now, oh. yes. Wow, look yeah. at you traveling. Well, we definitely yep. have to keep in touch. I will send you an email, and hopefully all this tech stuff worked out. And okay. Okay, take care, Anthony. <laughs> awesome, I'll see you.